My name is Kevin Shelton. I'm the vice president this year of SMO. I am Jordan Young, and my sophomore year, I was the librarian of the Singing Men of Ohio. Uh, my name is Jake Conklin, um, and I have been, let's see, positions. I've been section leader for two years, and student can, actually section leader for, yeah, two years, and student conductor for two years. My name is Ryan Davidson, and I've been the tour manager and the business manager of Smile. My name is Brian Powers. Um, I was the Tender One section leader. My name is Diedrich Bonner, and I am currently serving as the SMO president, and I served, served as the SMO president last year, and my sophomore year I was the tour manager. The way that I found out about SMO was actually my freshman year winter quarter. I had class with Jordan, and he had always been talking about, you know, that he had SMO and that he had this, had a gig for Section 8 or that there was a concert for SMO coming up. And, and finally, you know, I hadn't singing in, in high school. I had always wanted to maybe sing again, but I didn't know if I really wanted to or if I wanted to try something new. But finally, I asked him if, if maybe there was a way that I could, could get in. My best friend that I came here um, uh, from high school with, um, Zach Walker, he was a music major, and he had to join two ensembles for, uh, <clears throat> for his major. And he told me that one of them was the Singing Men of Ohio and that I should audition with him for it. Um, so he dragged me to the audition. Um, I really wanted to do it because I wanted to keep that going um, and have that outlet again. So he dragged me to the rehearsal and uh, I'm to the audition. And my RA happened to be Ken Burbucky also at the same time. So uh, he was a large influence as well. He uh, encouraged me to do it also. And they both kind of took me over there and I, I auditioned. And um, fortunately and luckily I got in. Well, I was in choir in high school. Um, I didn't actually, well, when I came here, I had no idea about the Singing Men of Ohio or anything like that because uh, I was from Montana. I mean, I didn't know anything about Ohio. Um, and I actually saw um, their winter concert uh, here in my freshman year, and that's when I decided that I wanted to join, even though I couldn't never fit it into my schedule until my junior year, I guess. I still never really had time for it, but it was something that I really wanted to do. The reason I joined SMO was because I used to sing in high school and when I got here my first quarter a lot of people don't know I wasn't in SMO. Um, I know, it's a shock. Um, so when winter, winter quarter rolled around um, my friend Kylie actually told me that the director at the time, Dr. Feener, was looking for some singers so I decided to go ahead and audition and I liked it so I stuck with it ever since. I joined the Singmen of Ohio from when I was in honors choir. Um, we got to sing, I got to sing under Dr. Fiener, and we did Man of La Mancha, that was the men's piece that year. And we actually got to sing and rehearse with SMO, the current SMO, that was 2003. And um, when I found out I was coming here, I knew that I wanted to be in SMO from day one, especially since being in high school, on choir. So then I did, um, being a music major, of course, it was like oh, all these choirs and so, Looked up SMO and then auditioned and then here we are. I came down for the honor band and choir my freshman or my senior year of high school and uh, had a sectional. The tenor sectional was run by R.D. Matthew that year. Uh, this was right after Dr. Zook had died. Uh, he died in November of uh, 99, this was, er, of 2000, and this was January of 2001. So just a couple months had passed, um, and he came into the sectional late. He was sweating. He was out of breath, and he comes in. He says, "Sorry, guys. I, uh, I was, I was with Smo. I had a rehearsal with Smo. One of the high school guys that was there with us said, uh, you know, what, what's Smo? He looks at us and, without missing a beat, he says, "It's the best damn group of guys that I've ever had the privilege of standing in front of." Um, this is a man who had conducted some of the best men's choruses in the region, perhaps in the country, at Bowling Green for 30 years plus. And he had had two rehearsals with Small. And he came in and that's, that was his response. So as soon as I heard that, I knew I had to be a part of it. So as soon as I got to OU, uh, first thing I did was find out about Small auditions and how to get in. Favorite Small memory? Um... 
one that sticks out in my mind, one that will always be uh, a special moment for me. I think kind of that got me uh, into SMO and made me realize that this was going to be a special ride was uh, I, it was Section 8 tryouts my freshman year. Um, and there was probably over 40 or 50 guys that auditioned that year and, you know, all SMO related, obviously. And um, <clears throat> I went in to try out and I was kind of nervous. I didn't think I was going to do it in the first place. And I went in and uh, Dr. Funer was sitting there with, with Ryan J. Grubb. And they were kind of talking to me for a second. And I sang with my quartet and uh, I was on my way out. And Ryan Grubb called my name because he wanted me to stay in the room. But I didn't hear him until the, like the very last second. So I turned to, to look at him to see what he wanted, and then I turned back around and I ran into the coat rack. Um, and I hit my head on the very top and face planted on the ground. I thoroughly enjoy the, uh, the bus wars and the bus jazz. And uh, I think my, my favorite bus jazz anyway, or bus war, oh, you've probably heard T.O. and Mike a lot, huh? <laughs> oh, well, there's the, the, the epic Tom Ogilvy and Mike Ward bus joust. <laughs> All right, my favorite SMO memory, I would have to say, it doesn't really have a lot to do with SMO, but it's just one of the funniest things I think I've ever seen in my life. And it had to do with the time when we were at Cedar Point, and Dederick will know all about it. This crackhead lady who was with all her grandchildren came up and had her legs just to pop in, and it became a part of SMO, and I think I'll remember that for the rest of my life. Um, another good one was on tour uh, my freshman year at the University of South Carolina. Um, Nathan Chamberlain did the absolute best impression of Will Ferrell's Harry Carey on Saturday Night Live that I've ever seen. Uh, we, got, we got down there and uh, the old guys come around, they say, okay, we're going to do something different for Columbus tonight. Uh, Fiener had no idea it was going to happen. So instead of splitting in the middle for Luigi, we, went, uh, we all went to one side and just left Nathan standing over there in the bass section. And he goes on for about five minutes in Harry Carey. Fiener was dying. He almost fell off the stage. Um, it was hilarious.